Imagine a future where you're living a life filled with purpose, joy, and abundance. You wake up each day feeling energized and motivated to tackle whatever comes your way. Now, bring that vision to the present moment. As you watch this video, I want you to visualize yourself letting go of those self-destructive habits and replacing them with ones that will propel you toward success. In Stoic philosophy, it is believed that individuals have the power to shape their own destiny through their thoughts, actions and choices, by developing good habits and eliminating bad ones. One can cultivate a life of wisdom, tranquility, and virtue, as Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. So, start changing now by removing bad habits, and remember small beginnings lead to great endings. Let's do it. I want to start by saying that this message is just for you. I know that there are millions of videos out there and you could easily choose to watch something else, but you didn't. You're here now, and I appreciate that. So let me say, thank you for giving me your valuable time. Now I want to ask you a favor. I'm asking you to make a commitment to yourself right now, and that commitment is simple. Do not skip this video under any circumstances, not now, not later, because you're different from the rest. You're an exception, and as an exception, you need to act like one. You need to treat yourself differently and invest your time and attention in things that matter. So, stay focused. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. You become what you give your attention to. If you wish to improve, be content to appear foolish or stupid. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? If your choices are beautiful, so too will you be beautiful. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. If you need a witness to your virtue, be your own. Devote the rest of your life to making progress. Don't just say that you have read books. Show that through them you have learned to think better. It's not things that upset us, but our judgments about things. Circumstances don't make a man. They only reveal him to himself. Don't set your heart on so many things and you will get what you need. It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. I cannot escape death, but I can escape the fear of it. Welcome events in whichever way they happen. This is the path to peace. The more we value things outside of our control, the less control we have. Keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. The Essence of Philosophy a man should so live that his happiness shall depend on as little as possible from external things. No man is free who is not master of himself. Seek not good in eternal things, seek it in yourselves. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside of themselves for approval. First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do, was a Stoic philosopher who lived during the first and second centuries A.D., Born into slavery, he was eventually freed and went on to establish a famous and well-attended philosophy school in Greece, where he taught his particular brand of Stoicism, correctly identifying what is within our control and what is not, focusing our efforts on the things within our control, and learning to accept what is not. This distinction is important because no matter how much we try, no matter how upset or frustrated we get, we cannot change things outside the reach of our control. A life of attempting to control the uncontrollable will undoubtedly be one of bitterness, frustration, and wasted effort. On the other hand, a life focused on doing what we can with what we have is much more likely to be productive, effective, empowering, and, altogether, more constructive. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. 
God has entrusted me with myself. No man is free who is not master of himself. A man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. The world turns aside to let any man pass who knows where he is going. The key to control is not in controlling external events but in controlling your own mind. There is only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. There is only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. Some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and, in one word, whatever are not our actions. The things in our control are by nature free, unrestrained, unhindered. But those not in our control are weak, slavish, restrained, belonging to others. Remember then, that if you suppose that things which are slavish by nature are also free, and that what belongs to others is your own, then you will be hindered. You will lament, you will be disturbed, and you will find fault both with gods and men. But if you suppose that only to be your own which is your own, and what belongs to others such as it really is, then no one will ever compel you or restrain you. Further, you will find fault with no one or accuse no one. You will do nothing against your will. No one will hurt you, you will have no enemies and you not be harmed. In our control is the most beautiful and important thing, the thing because of which even the God himself is happy, namely, the proper use of our impressions. We must concern ourselves absolutely with the things that are under our control and entrust the things not in our control to the universe. If you want your children and wife and friends to live forever, you're a fool because you're wanting things that aren't within your power to be within your power and the things that aren't your own to be your own. No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. The content of your character is your choice. Day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. There are two things a person should never be angry at, what they can help and what they cannot. Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. Remember that among the things over which we have complete control are the goals we set for ourselves. I think that when a Stoic concerns himself with things over which he has some but not complete control, such as winning a tennis match, he will be very careful about the goals he sets for himself. In particular, he will be careful to set internal rather than external goals. Thus, his goal in playing tennis will not be to win a match, something external, over which he has only partial control, but to play to the best of his ability in the match, something internal, over which he has complete control. By choosing this goal, he will spare himself frustration or disappointment should he lose the match. Since it was not his goal to win the match, he will not have failed to attain his goal as long as he played his best. His tranquility will not be disrupted. Stoics would recommend, for example, that I concern myself with whether my wife loves me, even though this is something over which I have some but not complete control. But when I do concern myself with this, my goal should not be the external goal of making her love me. No matter how hard I try, I could fail to achieve this goal and would as a result be quite upset. Instead, my goal should be an internal goal, to behave, to the best of my ability, in a lovable manner. Similarly, my goal with respect to my boss should be to do my job to the best of my ability. These are goals I can achieve no matter how my wife and my boss subsequently react to my efforts. By internalizing his goals in daily life, the Stoic is able to preserve his tranquility while dealing with things over which he has only partial control. Gratitude is simply the practice of being grateful and appreciative for the wonderful things in our lives. It can be something as simple as giving thanks to someone who has helped you, enjoying a moment in the day, or reflecting on your day's highlights. While showing appreciation and gratitude may seem like a small thing, it can actually have a huge positive effect on our general sense of well-being and happiness. The practice itself has been a part of philosophy for thousands of years, being practiced by Buddhists, Stoics, and Taoists, among others.
The widespread application of gratitude is, in part, due to its simplicity and effectiveness. Being grateful helps us focus on the good parts of our lives. It can be all too easy to become mired in negativity and concentrate on what's wrong in today's world, especially with social media and the negative nature of the news recently. However, as we practice gratitude, we focus on the good in our lives, no matter how insignificant it may seem. This subtle change in our perspective can, over time, change the way we see ourselves, the world around us, and other people for the better. In addition, being grateful helps strengthen our bonds with others and nurture our relationships. If we spend some time each day thinking about the good that our loved ones bring us, what they do for us, and how we'd feel without them, we can cause a massive shift in how we feel about those people and their impact on our well-being. Similarly, when we express our gratitude to others, we show our appreciation for them. Things like this can also have a huge impact on how a person feels, and it doesn't take much to extend our thanks. Generally, gratitude is as simple as a change in our focus, but it can have a profound impact on our well-being and how we view life. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. Marcus Aurelius Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. True happiness is to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Pass through this brief patch of time in harmony with nature, and come to your final resting place gracefully, just as a ripened olive might drop, praising the earth that nourished it and grateful to the tree that gave it growth. Marcus Aurelius All you need are these. Certainty of judgment in the present moment, action for the common good in the present moment, and an attitude of gratitude in the present moment for anything that comes your way. If you admit to having derived great pleasures, your duty is not to complain about what has been taken away but to be thankful for what you have been given. Remember that you must behave in life as at a dinner party. Is anything brought around to you? Put out your hand and take your share with moderation. Does it pass by you? Don't stop it. Is it not yet come? Don't stretch your desire towards it, but wait till it reaches you. Do this with regard to children, to a wife, to public posts, to riches, and you will eventually be a worthy partner of the feasts of the gods. And if you don't even take the things which are set before you, but are able even to reject them, then you will not only be a partner at the feasts of the gods, but also of their empire. We should try by all means to be as grateful as possible. For gratitude is a good thing for ourselves, in a sense in which justice, that is commonly supposed to concern other persons, is not. Gratitude returns in large measure unto itself. There is not a man who, when he has benefited his neighbor, has not benefited himself. I do not mean for the reason that he whom you have aided will desire to aid you, or that he whom you have defended will desire to protect you, or that an example of good conduct returns in a circle to benefit the doer, just as examples of bad conduct recoil upon their authors, and as men find no pity if they suffer wrongs which they themselves have demonstrated the possibility of committing, but that the reward for all the virtues lies in the virtues themselves, for they are not practiced with a view to recompense. The wages of a good deed is to have done it. I am grateful not in order that my neighbor, provoked by the earlier act of kindness, may be more ready to benefit me, but simply in order that I may perform a most pleasant and beautiful act. I feel grateful, not because it profits me, but because it pleases